gentlemen. Um, my name is Sean. And I'm Dara. And this is Maybe I Love You podcast, where we take the most interesting topics and we discuss them as a couple <laughs> to try to teach you guys what we know now and uh, inform you about what we think we might know and then uh, try to throw some knowledge at you. And, and so also, we should say that it, we're not experts. No. So some of this <laughs> is, uh, before, you think, this. before you think this is Dr. Shaw, yeah. some of this is just us discussing and coming to conclusions. Either we're researching this and then talking about it and kind of getting each other's thoughts or just really also just opening up a conversation to topics that couples deal with. Yeah. So yeah. today's topic... Uh, you've probably been following the series is uh, we're doing the love languages mm -hmm. um, today uh, specifically we're talking about words of affirmation um, so if you're not familiar with the what love languages are there's multiple love languages that that's the way people interpret it uh, you get to get test it's important for you to know your love language <laughs> you can tell we're getting to the end of this like there's a test you could yeah, just you know, figure out what how you love if you don't know what to do by now you haven't watched the other ones in the series but yeah, yeah, today yeah. is the most important one in my opinion well okay fun fact okay so this is both our number one yeah which actually um, makes it interesting because we need to give this, but we also need to receive this. Correct. So if you and your partner share the same love language, um, that could be like a really good thing. Yeah, Because you kind of know what you want and you can give that. It's not hard for me to show her how much I love her with words of affirmation because that's how I want to get my love from hers with words of affirmation. <laughs> so, so, so selfish, uh, but so in the best of ways. So in the best of basically ways. Basically, in a nutshell, words of affirmation is um, saying things that make you know that you're loved. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, with her, for instance, uh, I constantly tell her how beautiful she is. And we're going to get uh, into smart. that, actually. Uh, those are ways, but there's lots more actually, to it. Actually, okay, can I already stop you there? No, nope. okay, dun, dun, dun. Hey, we're having an honest conversation. So, you know, I always have these, like, fun little ways to like remember things or like do things or apply them mm -hmm. don't worry I have one for us oh, today but actually one of the points I'm gonna make is that for women at least maybe for me I guess I shouldn't speak for all women on planet earth speak for all of them um, sometimes like oh you look beautiful is like not she always says that I, I, I see that and I'm like Oh, you look so pretty. I mean, okay, got, here's the thing. You're just phoning it here, in. No, it's no, not no, no. real. And that makes me sound difficult. But here's the thing is like sometimes a woman like needs to hear that, but sometimes like they need more descriptive words. So it doesn't just seem like the thing you should say. Like when someone's dressed up and it's like, oh, wow, you look beautiful. It's like really getting my hair done and then spending like doing my nails and buying a new dress. Oh, cool. Like, and that sounds greedy, but it's more just like being – like saying something with detail, like "Wow, that outfit really makes your eyes pop," or, or, or something. Maybe I don't what know. it is is when I see her and she's in pajamas and her hair is not done and no makeup's on. I still think she's but beautiful. That's, <laughs> like, that's like sweet. That's but then, sweet. That's good but though. Then when she gets all unexpected, I guess like razzled, not, dazzled up, yeah, and looking yeah, all, yeah. then I go, "Wow, honey, you look gorgeous." It doesn't under it take away from my I think you're beautiful thing. It's just yeah. merely there's different levels to it. I guess the point I'm trying to make your is your hair that, is like this. Yeah, no, I know I don't look like beautiful. beautiful. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I the point gorgeous. I'm trying to make is like words of affirmation, I think, for the person you're giving them to. The more you know that person, the more you kinda know what is really going to mean the most to them. Oh, like, okay, okay I'm going to give you like an example today. Oh, we got an example. So I'm finishing up writing a book and we were with another couple and like he wasn't trying to get brownie points. Like it wasn't like I was trying to wow with an outfit and then he like gives a compliment. It just kind of out of nowhere. You could just like hear your heart and saying like, no, you don't understand guys. Like she's a really talented writer. Like sometimes I read her stuff. And it was just, it was such a good word of affirmation. One, because I really needed to hear it but two it didn't seem like there was any agenda behind it it, it was, was just genuine. like it was so genuine and it, yeah. and it came across that way so I think that's like something for people who need words of affirmation is just come from a very like raw honest place but it's not always what you think you should say it's like sometimes just for no reason and that can sometimes mean the most I would agree 
Yeah, uh, that's that's the most important Glad part. We agree. If if somebody were to just come to me like they always do, Sean, you're so gorgeous. <laughs> and if, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, you listen, guys, you. you're just trying to make me feel good, mm. and I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> but once in a while, someone come by and go, Sean. I just want you to know, you look amazing. And then I go. Yeah. That was probably pretty honest. That was coming from the true spot. So, mm-hmm. uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna throw out some words of affirmation to your significant other, um, make sure that she or he knows that it's coming from a true, honest spot. Because I, I, I think she nails it. I mean, nobody wants to just be told, you know, something to be told. It's kind of like when you, you you see your one kid and you go, "Ah, you're my favorite." But they know you're not their favorite. Oh my gosh, this went dark. <laughs> wow. You're just saying I'm it to make them happy. I'm not going to say a word on this topic. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious. All right. Do you remember um, one of like the kindest things someone's ever said to you that like really encouraged you? Like it could have been a past girlfriend or a teacher or yeah. a, a boss. I mean, I, like, can you think I, I of can, an example? Can, I'm of not someone? thinking of one specific thing, but I, I do think that maybe maybe it's a dude thing, maybe it's a guy thing. Okay. It wasn't so much about looks. It was sometime when I got a compliment about like how my brain works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it, you know, I think the the words <laughs> of affirmation that I got was something like, oh, "You're you're really smart," you know, or something like that. And that that meant way more than all those times people tell me I'm gorgeous. Mm. Okay. Well, my, my, my point with this is like everybody, if you can think of a kind word, like I have a couple examples, I think it was something I believed to be true, but I really needed to hear. And I think that stems back to like, if you say something and the person doesn't believe it about themselves because they have low self-esteem or whatever, it might not like, you could be like, but I tell you things all the time, but it might not be getting to like the core of what they need to hear. But if it's something you kind of believe, but just need reinforced, like those words can really like stick with you because it's like, man, I was kind of hoping somebody felt that way. But then it's like, you said it like an English teacher, like you said, I was a creative writer and it like confirmed it. I think that's, and then likewise with hurtful words, Words. I mean, everyone can remember those almost more so than the encouraging words verbatim. Yeah. And maybe it's something that you kind of believed about yourself, but was hoping no one would see, or it could just be so far fetched. But it's like we remember the detail of those words just as much as we do the kind words. So I think that's why there's a challenge to be very descriptive in our kind words so that they really are memorable because yeah. we always remember the bad things. Yeah, I, I think, well, I think. So one of the things I saw, it takes like 10 nice things to get over one bad thing. So, you know, as far as like, yeah, I can definitely remember when people said mean things to yeah, me. Yeah, that, um, that'll that stick. Hurts. Yeah. yeah, especially when it's kind of true and you're like, ooh. I know, that's the wow, worst. Really? It's like, shoot, that's you know that about me? I Thanks. was hoping that was a secret. So if you haven't watched, we have another um, podcast and it's what to do when you say something hurtful. So I'm trying not to overlap on the power of words. So right. when I was even trying to think of like some scriptures about words, I was trying to not go to the obvious ones because some of those we cover yeah. in the other podcast and like James is uh, the book of James has a lot of wisdom about words and how our tongue can start a small fire like Mm. our words are so powerful but I found a couple like other verses to talk about and we're staying on the love language words of affirmation path yes yes and this one I think like I don't understand why Hobby Lobby like doesn't make like a sign with this on it if you're familiar like they do all these trendy signs but they're based on like scripture verses and then you put them in like your living room and we may or may not have one over in our other room there but this is a good one and this one like doesn't get brought up a lot it's in Romans 14 19 you might want to jot this down I really love this it says so then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding and I feel like that's a good one to have in your home. Like, let's, the key word I think there is pursue. I think I'm going to shoot an email over to Javi. You should. Yeah. This is a good one. I would put this up. Yeah. The idea is you're pursuing it. It's not just a natural thing. You're pursuing peace and mutual upbuilding. Yeah. Like, imagine if mutual. your home was a place that was the place where you got the most encouraging. I mean, right. how peaceful would that be? How uplifting would that environment be? For your family, for your kids, I think for you, you, you as a you couple. You nailed it. That's, that's, that is what the whole goal I don't know why of, people don't share that with yeah, you. Yeah, no. You, you want, you, your house should be uplifting. You know, your And it should be a place for peace. And yeah. that's, that's a tricky Mutual one. Mutual upbuilding. Mutual, um, yeah. yeah. 
Um, all right. Yeah. I've got others. I see this other one. Okay, Ephesians. So it says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion. I'll come back to why I think that's cool. That it gives grace to those who hear. So fitting in the occasion. So my little trendy thing I did with words later, kind Ooh, of okay. like I tried to use some of these verses to build off of. So it's not just like my creative thoughts, but actually built like around scripture. Um, and then Proverbs, because Proverbs is like the book of where you can get wisdom and knowledge. So I feel like it would be good to throw one of Proverbs um, thoughts in there. And it's, um, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So I think just going back to, <clears throat> is your words acting as a weapon or as a place where people can find healing? And it's you interesting know? that it says that it, tongues uh, of, that can actually heal. You know, yeah. like it's not just... Um, Tongues, you know, can say something that makes you feel good. Yeah. It's actually healing. And you know, that maybe that's, that's, that's a part of words of affirmation. I, I, I think like, in a lot of ways you're right. You I mean, know? It's, it is. When, when someone that you love, like mm -hmm. you, say something that is uh, uplifting, mm -hmm. um, nice, um, it can. It's not just in, re invigorating, mm -hmm. but it, it can It can set you on a whole new path. I mean, yeah. you know, one, yeah. one statement, let's just say like Elon Musk came in and said, mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, this is brilliant. You know, you would know. Oh wow, it might, it, 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 this it is the way I need to go in the right way. So when when you say something, you're like my Elon Musk coming into my heart. Why thank you? Are the you. nice things? What you, a compliment! You, you know, I, 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 that was a compliment. I it was. Okay, it was. Cool. It right. was. Uh, okay, last one. It's in Colossians uh, four six. It says, "Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt." so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Uh, of course, season with salt is throughout scripture, but as a chef, I always think of, I hate when food is bland and like seasoning is key. And so I think like our words, that kind of goes back to saying like, you're beautiful where it can feel bland or generic versus you're beautiful because I saw how you interacted with that person and right. you seemed so present and I could tell that you created joy in that moment for that person. It's being more specific, I guess. I, I wonder if the original was used with salt because you know salt preserves yeah no well. it, so is, it is there's, yeah. there's there's another level to that that's that's real interesting that it's like you yeah. know you not only can you drop something nice on somebody but it's actually gonna like stay oh that's like kind of the kindest words like it sticks with you yeah i like that yeah, good, good good point i like that because um okay so um in 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 reference to obviously you want to say nice things to your significant other you don't want to be <laughs> saying mean things but but, you know, part of this whole exercise and this thing we're going into is for you to understand what your love language is mm -hmm. and make sure that you're conveying that to your partner so they understand. But in, in addition to that is making sure not only do you understand what theirs are, vice versa, but communicating ways that you can uh, affect the other person the right way because I could I could sit here all day and tell her she's pretty like I was saying earlier mm -hmm. but it doesn't affect her as much as when I when I use the right words that actually is what she's looking for so yeah. you need to be for smart sure. about how and when you say things and making sure that it's it's said to kind of like um, a violin okay? okay or a cello okay. okay I can grab a bow and I can play on it right. but if I'm not hitting the right notes it's not gonna it's not gonna resonate correctly correct so you know it, it, beautiful is like a Meh, apparently for her but if I hit the right note mm. you know it actually it, it is you're music to her yes out there. so yeah <laughs> so over. make sure you're not you're not throwing the wrong note uh, and and I think that comes down to just paying attention you know there's yeah. one of the things we've talked about throughout this whole thing is pay attention to keywords and pay attention to what you know is needed yeah you know so and, be smart about and that. this goes back to also we've kind of mentioned on each of these that we feel that they're very related to Mm -hmm. Or they correlate to your childhood. Yes. So, you know, whether this was something that was encouraged. So, my dad is never short of a good pep talk. Like, literally, I hate to say this, I could murder someone. No, I would never, in case we need that on record. But I could murder someone and he would find something positive to say. He's just really good at pep talks. I'm yeah. trying to think of an extreme example. So, I grew up in a very encouraging environment where... 
um, I was always given words of you're great, you can do this, you failed, but that's okay, you learned from it and you're gonna do even better the next time. And you, you know, there was always a positive spin on any situation. And so I think that words are huge because it was something that I grew up kind of really like seeking, but also feeling loved through the words. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you can relate. Like, I don't yeah. know. When I was a kid growing that. up, um, yeah, I, I think both my parents are really verbally loving. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, we've, we've gone back and forth. Yeah. Absolutely. Who you are today and why you like feeling the way you like feeling loved is because of how you were shown love at an early stage. I agree. Um, you know, I, I, everybody that raised me, they were always very nice and kind with their words. Um, so that definitely is probably one of the reasons why I'm the way. My number one is words. Mm-hmm. Two is touch. Um, then, you know, everything else kind of goes after that. Um, so I have a fun, quirky way to oh, we got, help oh, with we this. Got, we got one of our little uh, yeah. acronym games. So the crazy thing is, is I can make these up, but then I like really try to apply them myself too. Because I was like, oh man, this is good. Like, I'm going to try this on you. Okay. You're my guinea pig. I like it. But um, also, like if this is an area that's hard, but you're with somebody that you love and they need this, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, this is like challenging for me. This is like a nice little filter you can run through. Uh, you know, and say, does it fit into one of these boxes, kind of? Okay. So it's the word words. Words. Yeah. W O R D S. Correct. Okay. Is there another way just to make sure. spell it? This is just in case we're, I'm mumbling or something. The words. O is hyphenated. Yeah, there's a there's, an, there's a little <laughs> above the O. There's no. Anyways, okay. So the first W is are the words wise. So sometimes what a person needs to hear is just advice but in a very kind way okay like that can be affirmation to me if you if we're talking and you offer me wisdom i feel affirmed okay i really do i feel like wow i'm so glad we had that conversation i feel better i feel like i have more direction so like words of wisdom yeah i like it okay observant and that's where this one about beautiful comes in Mm. because for women i think that the more observant you can be, the better. So instead of saying, wow, you look beautiful. I should have been specific. Like, your eyebrows are on freak. On, yeah. Huh? Or like. What those kids say, freak. Yeah, or like, wow, like, are those, I mean, this is going to sound weird. Like, are those your, new Your earrings? teeth look really brushed today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but like observant. So if you're struggling, try not to like, I think. If Don't it's, broad if, stroke. If it's generic, get, it doesn't get mean. Get a fine brush. As much. Yeah. And then yeah. you're going to paint leaves on a tree, yes. not paint the whole tree with one smack. Yes. Relevant is for R. And the reason I think relevant is because. There's a time and a season for everything, and there's something maybe in this season I need to hear that will be more relevant and encouraging to me than six months ago. So right. just being real, um, right now I'm in between jobs, which obviously can. there's days where I'm like, man, am I going to find the right thing? Like, I think I made the right decision, but I'm really hoping the next thing is going to be like perfect and exactly what I had in mind. So in this season, something relevant would be maybe encouraging me in a specific right. way around that. And like, hey, you're so talented, like whoever... Uh, hires you is is gonna really be lucky. I don't care. I'm I'm patting myself up, but okay. I'm trying to give an example yeah. of something. Be relevant. relevant. So I don't come up to you saying, you know, you're smarter than almost all the high schoolers I've ever met. Correct. Because 20 you. years I knew ago, you could just drive the point home. That would that would have been really nice. Really nice. Yeah. But right Not now. relevant today. Yeah. Now which is kind of rude. Right. Which also starts with the letter R. <laughs> Rude. Rude is not part of my fun little facts for today. Okay. If you've ever seen Big Bang Theory with Sh- Sheldon, fun with flags, that's how I feel right now. We're having fun with flags. <laughs> okay, so we got W. Got, okay, oh, okay. We got o, o, D. And now we got o, D. D. O, I say, no, not O, D. O and D kind of go together. Okay. So observant is for O, but D is descriptive. And okay. so that's also just the more detail you can give, I think. So I can say... D would work, detail would work for Detail D. would work too, but I like descriptive, descriptive because I'm a writer and I feel like I can say, you know, wow, your eyes sparkle like, you know, like the stars or something like that. I, I hear think, that a lot. Yeah, but that's more memorable. Mostly guys at the gym, but it's a little weird. Okay. Well, that's more memorable than just being like, wow, you have nice eyes. Like, okay. you know, yeah, like, like I mean, that little extra. A little, um, little pizzazz. Yes. yes. And then S is for salted. And that's the same idea of just salting your words, making Not sure that... Not salty. Salted. Oh, yeah. Good salted. And there's a lot of scriptures about how salt preserves and how it's, you know, it's such a, it's, it's a seasoning that adds. And so 
making sure that what we say really adds value. So whatever word you use, make sure it's full of flavor. Wise, observant, very, very relevant, descriptive. descriptive, and salted. They all kind of go together, but it's just getting to that next level of digging deeper and really knowing the person you're with and not keeping it generic. You just, know? just as long as it's not mean, that's the most important. But for words of affirmation, like... It takes me forever to find a card for someone because sure. it's like, oh, this isn't saying like we're past the third grade Valentine's Day cards of I think you're cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's that next level. Of, this is saying exactly how I feel about you. Yeah. And so Most I of the cards I buy for her, I scratch out like the names in there, <laughs> you know, and it's, I just kind of adapt it. It's like no. happy 30th birthday. And I'm like, hmm. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, that's so not true. In fact, one of the things I look forward to most is for occasions because you always write yeah. a long thing. That's, I, just, I hired see, this guy in the corner. He fills it funny, all in for funny. me. You're so funny. Yeah, and this is by, it's called Maybe I Love You. Maybe I Love You. <laughs> Anyways, what else do you got on words? I mean, you know, when it, when it comes to words in a relationship, Okay, um, it's very important. But you got to remember is there's uh, the, the five love languages work outside of a uh, relationship. It also works in your family life with mm -hmm. your kids, with mm -hmm. your mother-in-law, with your brother, boss, and your, boss your employees. So, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know, unlike the touch, which you can't do in the work world anymore because people get fired. <laughs> um, words of affirmation is something you can do. So, you know, it, it, it's one of the things, and she knows this, I, it's one of the things I always do with my buddies. You know, I'm very, uh, very kind with my words. Mm -hmm. I tell my buddies I love them because I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell them nice things, encouraging words. Um, but as well with that, when I'm at work, mm -hmm. I talk very highly to the people that, uh, you know, might need a little boost because I, it's the way I feel. So, And it's not like um, that you have an agenda in mind, but no. I do find that your results are better in a workplace, if you're a leader over something and you encourage those around you, the they are more loyal. They're more, they have more confidence in what they're doing. So mm -hmm. I do feel like words of affirmation. I've never seen a Absolutely. situation where it hurts. Like it, it builds the whole morale and culture. So yeah. I mean, I do just think this is good practice. Unless in life. you're, it's the only time it doesn't work is okay. when you say it to somebody and everybody knows it's a lie. You know, and right? Then, well, that so goes I'm, back to you know, it's got to yeah, be relevant. You got, you it's got to you know, be wise. You Ricky can't just... over here that never knows how to you know wash the dishes, and there's always spaghetti left on it. You're like, hey, Ricky, you're really good at washing dishes, and then everybody else in the restaurant is like, no, no, Ricky's really bad at that. <laughs> he obviously lies to him to encourage him, but it must mean he's lying to us. So yeah. it that's the only spot I would say don't lie, okay, mm -hmm. especially to Ricky because Ricky needs to know he does not know how to wash dishes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I agree. I don't know. I work in ministry, so we try to be honest, but that's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> even when you're trying to encourage. Try. Um, so I think one thing is like just digging into the person, like why you love the person, okay, and then using that as kind of like a springboard for your words. Um, so we're doing a um, marriage, pre marriage class right now, and we just had a chapter on a cherish list, yeah which is the idea that you promise you're going to love and cherish the person forever. And so they encourage, which is a cute little exercise, to write down all the things you cherish and value about the person so that when you're in a fight or when you're in a bad season in your marriage, you can look at the list and it's things that you believe are true, even if that moment you don't necessarily feel them or see them. Right. So I think that's a really good way to do words of affirmation is to write things down that yeah. you cherish about uh, the person. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be real smart. It's an exercise... I, I mean, I have, I have some stuff written down, but it's not in that kind of way. Yeah, but now I can same. see it like, oh, you know what? It would probably be real smart for me to have a list of things why I love her. Yeah. So when I'm mad at her, I go like, oh, I'm sick and tired of her, but that's right. All right, she's good. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these things. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I won't be mad very long. And then I think no matter where, like this is, I'll say this is easy for us, but like this is something we enjoy. We enjoy encouraging each other the words of affirmation yeah. yeah but i think everybody needs to practice it because and also setting that example because i feel like people can tell your relationship based on how you speak to each other agreed and yeah. I've, I've seen it with the the flip side is where a couple you know they've been married forever yeah and they 
you would think that they would say nice things to each other, but it's just like the meanest stuff you've ever they heard. They know how to push each other's buttons. Yeah, and you just and so... as, as an outsider, you know, I'm looking at their relationship like, ooh. Yeah. You know, is that what I want in my relationship? No. Even if they might be even having fun with it, um, I think it's important to demonstrate how your true feelings are at least once every you know, while in front of other people, yeah. if not all the time. Because I, I do think it's an inspiration to other people's relationships is when you have a healthy one. And yeah. then, you know, not that we're trying to make any other relationships jealous. It's more like, hey, if, if they can look at our relationship and say, wow, you know, they're doing some stuff right. You know, maybe we should do more of that. Well, you I know? Th- yeah, it does. It sets a good example. But I think also like we were kind of talking about how, we just don't know that many people where we admire their relationship, which yeah. is weird because we both know like a ton of people. We're very social, but I feel like there's just a lot of people where we look at their marriage and we're like, oh man, they just kind of seem like stuck together. They don't really seem like they're making each other yeah. better. Majority of the relationships of people, it, it, it seems like it's not a happy marriage. Not all of and, them, and but I I'm think, just saying but, when you start going down your list, you're like, oh. Mm, and I think mm. like our conclusion of that and maybe – some of you might be agreeing, our conclusion is because of the words exchanged. I mean, yeah. what else are we going? We, we can't see every interaction, no. but the words don't seem From common. the outsider looking at, I mean, they might have the greatest relationship ever, but what we see during the time we spend together, right. it, they're and, definitely and, not and, demonstrating And you can't that. tell me that if the words were pleasant and kind and uplifting and this verse about pursuing peace and mutual building like if we saw that we would have a very different conclusion i would agree so i think it does so it's not only something words, you need to do in private but, but in it's public also in too. public too yeah to make sure that you know a, a, your children can see that the healthy relationship between you yeah and your friends can see that it's healthy and then they're not discouraging you to get a divorce or something like oh you know we see you over there crying you know yeah maybe not well <laughs> According to our book, we shouldn't even speak the, those the, words. We that, call it the D word. We, yeah. don't, we don't use the D word. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think so. I mean, I feel like we could go on all day because this is just something that I think is fun. I, I guess I, I think words really matter, but I also think it's really fun to build up the people you love because. It's so easy, it, too. Yeah. I mean, it, it should it, be easy because yeah. it's people you're choosing to spend your time with. It's people that you. Or choosing to spend your Hopefully life Hopefully you're endearing like, to it, you know, yeah. or you like them, you know. So, so I, you know, the more nice thing, hey, you've, you've seen it before where somebody you love or care about passes away. Yeah. You know, and then you just never have that chance to say those nice things. So, you you never know who needs to hear something nice. So, so I'm going to so, totally, like, just do a little shout out for oh, Sean here. Oh, a shout out. Yeah. Ooh. So, he started this thing on Facebook because I think this is really worth sharing oh. and telling because Sean's so awesome. See, but I need to be more specific. He's awesome because he's very thoughtful, and I think this idea he had came from such a genuine place of, and sorry, I'm telling your tale, of losing loved ones that never really he got to fully express what they meant. And, you know, it's such a sad thing to have to share how much somebody means to you when they are gone. And so he started this thing called Living Eulogy. Mm-hmm. And you can tell more because yeah, it's, just... your, it's your amazing idea. Well, really. it's, it's just simple. But I think it's I mean, awesome. It's, I, I, I just choose somebody I care about and I write a living eulogy for them before they pass so they can know where my true heart is. Mm-hmm. And, and he and tags I'm, them. I tag them on Facebook or put it on Instagram, make sure that they can see it. You know, I make it public and, and then I encourage them to do the same thing for somebody they love mm-hmm. before it's too late. Cause, but what a perfect example of words of affirmation of just out of the blue. Can you imagine like having a bad day and all of a sudden Sean's on your main page tagging you, tagging you, saying how saying much you how mean. wonderful you are, and, and I these, love you. And some of these ah, stories so are like twenty plus years of friendship, and just sharing like what makes them unique and why they're a good friend, and just it's so beautiful. And it's just like there's so much garbage on Facebook, and like here it is, you know, politics, all this stuff, and then you come across like that. It's so refreshing. Yeah. So I mean, I think that just goes back to like. Sean's heart for words and and I love words and I think so, everybody loves to hear something everyone, nice. Exactly. And, and, and if, so and that's the way we you should think, all be better at this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's conviction here too. But I think Romans fourteen nineteen 
um, should be a Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, if you're listening. Uh huh, sign. Make it a sign. Yeah. You know, a funny thing about the sign that she was talking about earlier. Here's a funny story. So, <laughs> in our early part of a relationship, oh, I bought funny. way too many this picture frames. This is a good brains. story to end on. Yeah, I just, uh, every time we had some kind of event going on, any uh, gift. Any, I would it didn't always have a frame. Day involved with a picture or something because yes. i just felt like you know i guess i was on a frame kick and <laughs> she comes so to me many frames. we ran out of walls <laughs> yeah she, she comes to me at one point and she's like hey you, you know what frames. don't give me anything else framed nothing <laughs> and the saddest part is i had a new picture in my trunk <laughs> ready to go which i never gave her uh, and then she calls me up one day and she's like i thought we talked about this so i'm like talk about what she goes i i got the i got it i opened it up Another frame. I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I come home, I see it, and it's like the Hobby Lobby sign that we have hanging up in the other room. And, and, and then the funniest <laughs> thing is it's um, it's in uh, Corinthians, it's um, 13, I think, of love is patient, love is kind. <laughs> so I'm reading it, and I'm in my head, I'm so mad. I'm She's like, furious. I'm like, this is sweet, and I know this verse, but I don't want any this. more frames. It wasn't me. I didn't it send it. It was her mom. My mom sends it. Her mom <laughs> sends it. And I'm in the doghouse. I get home, and I'm like, in my head going, did I say that? Yeah, but you know, like, I, I did. I'm going back to my Amazon list. Like, did I did I order that? No, yeah. it wasn't. It was her mom, and her mom got me in the doghouse. I had to dig my way out. Um, so, note to self, if you're buying her a gift, for, buy picture frames. No frames, no pictures. I don't pictures. even know how we got, oh, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, yeah. so, anyways, well, um, you guys, <laughs> feel free to comment below. Tell us some other ideas, nice things, or, uh, you know, if you wanted more information on the Living Eulogy figure it out <laughs> it's just Based on what i just it's told hashtag you. the living eulogy yeah. Yeah. um and then uh we, we look forward to your comments and uh we look forward to taking this journey together as we uh uh grow uh and uh spiritually grow yeah. and relationship grow and uh we hope you guys enjoy the information and we'll give updates later down the road when we okay. learn something new oh yeah thanks again guys talk to you uh, soon until next time until next time <laughs> <laughs>